welcome back. Last time we got the reset signs working and did some bug fixing to the move rocks and the holes. Today it's time for a camera so we can actually move around this world and not be stuck on a single screen. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and lock all of our layers. Let's go ahead and add a new layer and we are going to call this the triggers layer. Um, this is where I put my camera and the other triggers we'll be using in game. So let's go ahead. I drag this down below the shadow layer. You can put this anywhere you want. We're going to make this layer not visible, so it won't really matter. But for the time being, let's go ahead and make sure it's selected. We will double click and we're going to need to make two sprites. So the first one we're going to make is our camera. So go ahead, select sprite and call it camera. Go ahead and click. And we can go ahead and resize this to 16 by 16. We'll zoom in. Once again, I use kind of a fuchsia pink for my game objects, mostly because I don't use a color like this in my game. So if I ever see it while testing, I know that I have forgotten to turn something off. I make it a little darker. And again, this is just a personal preference. I like to just make sure I know what my objects are. So there's my terrible pixel camera. Okay. Oh, last thing I forgot to do is actually fix its origin point. So let's go ahead and set that to the top left. Right click, quick assign to top left, or again hit 7 on the number pad of the keyboard. So the camera's good, we can set that aside. And the last thing we need to do is the camera checker, really. So we'll double click, scroll on down to sprite. We'll call this camera check. Insert. We can leave this the size it is. I'm going to go ahead, select a color. This isn't super necessary, I just find it's a little easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a blue. I will set this to 100 on the alpha, paint that in. Then I will pick a red and the box, and I'm just going to draw some lines around the outside. Again, these don't need to be perfect. You don't need to see where everything is. It's not actually an issue. So we will set our image point to the top left, and then we will add one new image point, which will be in the center. And we can go ahead and close this now. Now, it's really large on the page here, and we're actually going to set this to be our viewport size. So what we're going to want to do is go over into our size, and we will change it to be 320 by 180. So this is our viewport size. We do have a bit of an issue here, though, where having this be the viewport size means it fits our viewport nicely. You can see little dotted lines along here where the actual viewport is. The problem is is 320 by 180 is not perfect for a 16 by 16 grid. We actually have a handful of pixels down here that don't actually fit inside of the grid. So what we're actually going to do is change the size from 320 by 180 to 320 by 176. That makes us line up nicely with oh, that makes us line up nicely with our grid and that means that if we drag out another one it will sit with it correctly. So now we're running into an issue of when you use the camera, when you're butted up against the edge of a layout, things like screen shake and other issues can arise. So we're going to go ahead and increase the size of this game layout here. But again, when you're making levels, you can make them any size you want. So currently it's 640 by 360. Let's go ahead and change this to 1500 by 1500. This is just going to give us a very large space to work with. We won't even be using this. No. That's too large. Let's make it a thousand by a thousand. That's a little bit better. Okay, so first off, uncheck background, select the grass, drag it all the way out just so it's there, and we can relock that. Now it's time to start moving our camera checks around. Let's delete this one. So now we have a camera and a camera checker. And the camera check, we're going to add an instance variable. New instance variable, we will call it ID and it's a number, go ahead and leave it there. Okay, and then we will select our camera object. Double click, I actually mess, I, I move the origin point to the top left and for the camera, we actually want it in the middle. Now we're gonna add a couple of things to it. So first we will add an instance variable and this instance variable will be called target. It will be a number. We can close that. Now, we will add two behaviors. The first behavior we're going to add is the scroll to behavior. That basically just makes it our camera. Then we will add a new behavior, and we will add the tween behavior. 
So that's pretty much all we need to do. Now what we need to do to set up our actual level will be to take these camera checks and we can go ahead and just copy and drag them out. So now the levels will take place in these locations if you want your camera to move. So I'll just make a 4x4 four four grid. Oh, I already drug it out. So now with that set, I'm going to lock our triggers layer. Come up to level. I'm just going to select everything up here and drag this down. And let's put it in this space here. And just to make things easy, what we test, I'm going to hold down control, drag all of it out, and again, put it on this side. And let's just do it again vertically so we can see it moving up as well. There we go. So now what we're going to have to do, oh, our player also needs to come down. And we can zoom on in. Now we just need to make a couple of tweaks because right now there's no way to actually get through the different areas. So let's go ahead and delete here, delete here, delete here, delete here. I'm going to extend this out so I can't just... Actually, I can leave that open. That's fine. But I don't want to be able to walk into an area that does not have a camera check. Okay, so that should be good right now. Okay, so the way this is going to work is each of the camera checks will have an ID. We'll set this through the code so you don't have to worry about putting it in on every level. I like to make level building as easy as possible, and if you had to go and assign each of these a number every time, it's not too difficult, but if you mess something up or miss, you know, miss seeing something, it can get to be a pain in the butt. So we will be setting that with code, and what's going to happen is this camera object, which has scroll, the scroll to behavior on it, so the viewport will follow this camera. We will move it to the camera check that the player is currently in, which is why we have the instance variable in the center, or not instance variable, the image point in the center. So if the player is overlapping this camera checker, the camera will move itself to the center of this camera check. If we move over here, the camera will scroll itself over, I put it behind. <laughs> it will move itself over to this side if the player is over here. So let's go ahead and set all that. First thing we want to do is make sure we give each of the camera checks an ID. So we're going to piggyback off the starter layout here. We're going to hit B for a blank sub event. Double click, system, for each, and we will say for each camera check. We will go to add action, camera check, set value, and we are going to set the ID number to the loop index. And that's all we have to do. Now the loop index, so where it says for each, it's going to, for every instance of the camera check, so currently we have six, this will run six times. It will check once, set its ID. Check again, check again, check again. Each time it'll increment the loop index until it reaches the final number. So now we can actually check this to make sure it works. Just run a debug layout. Everything should run. Nothing happens, obviously. We can't see anything at the moment. But what we can do is along the side here of our inspector, come down to camera check. We see that there are six cameras or camera check objects on the layout. If we check each one, the first one is an ID of zero. The second is an ID of one, two, three, four, and five. So that gave each of them a unique ID. So we are good to work with now um, using each of those having different IDs without having to set them ourselves. And now for the rest of the camera, we're going to set this up inside of the every tick. Right here where we have every tick setting the animation, we will just select it, hit B for a new blank sub event. And we are going to first be checking to see if the player box is overlapping a camera check. So double click, player box, is overlapping another object, and is overlapping camera check. So if the player is overlapping that, we will add an action, camera, scroll on down to set value, and we will set the target to camera check dot ID. So that means if the player box is overlapping any of the camera checks, it's going to tell the camera that its target, where it should be overlapping, is that number. Now, we're going to go back up to select every tick, hit B for another blank sub-event, double-click, camera, and we're going to check to see if the camera itself is overlapping a camera check. So camera is overlapping, choose camera check, OK. And we're going to hit B for a blank sub-event, because we need to make a couple of more distinctions whether it's overlapping the correct camera checker. So we will double click and say camera check, scroll on down to instance variable. If ID is not equal to camera dot target, then B, we will system trigger once while true. And we will write a function to move the camera now. 
let's go ahead and actually make that. And I'm sorry, if this is a little cluttered to see, I'm going to go ahead and drag this down to the very bottom for now so this is a little bit clearer. And hopefully that makes it easier to see. So we will right click, add function. We will call this move camera. Description will be move camera to target. And let's go ahead and make this a camera category. OK. And now we're going to add one parameter. So right click, add parameter. And this parameter will be the target. And it will be a number. So for this function, it's pretty simple. We're going to hit B for a new blank sub event. Double click. We will go to camera checker and we need to check its ID. So we're going to compare an instance variable of ID and see if it's equal to target, which is the parameter we are passing through. And then add an action, camera. Now it's time to use the tween function and we will be tweening two properties. So we will scroll on down to tween two properties, double click. The tag will be camera move. We will be tweening its position. And we will be tweening the end x will be camera check dot image point x. And now we're getting a red box here because we've told it to go to an image point. We just haven't told it to go to which image point. So we have currently there's two image points. There's zero and one. Zero is at the top left. One is in the center. We want it going to the one in the center. So we will just do parentheses one. And we will do the same for the y. Camera check dot image point y and image point number one. We will change the time it takes to one. And let's go ahead and just change the easing to in out sinusoidal. That just moves the camera a little nicer. We do not want it to destroy on complete. So we can click done. And other than calling the camera, we should be good. So now that we have the function created, we can go ahead and up here where we have the camera is overlapping, trigger once, add, function, we will go up to camera, move camera, and our target will be camera dot target. So now everything should be good to go. Let's go see if anything breaks and we need to fix it. Uh, let's go ahead and hit play. Oh, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> I didn't set up a position for if the camera is not overlapping anything else and the player is in a different spot. So last thing we need to do, because currently the camera is not overlapping the camera checker. That's what's happening here. We need to go X for an else. So if the camera is not overlapping the camera checker, as this is the case currently, we will hit B for a new blank sub event. We will double click camera check. Scroll on down to compare instance variable. If ID number is equal to camera dot target, we will just set the camera position there because this is really only going to happen when you start the level if you leave the camera off the stage. So let's go ahead and add action camera set position. I can't type set position and we will set it to just like before camera check dot image point X one and camera check dot image point y1. Now everything should work and let's see if we get less bugs this time. All right, so the camera has now moved down to the player. If we move over to this side, the camera moves over with us. If we move into this screen, the camera moves up here with us. And if we move to this side, excellent. There we go. So that's the camera all working. So all we need to do now is instead of going and setting all of these to be not visible, I find it's just easier to scroll back up to on start of layout, add an action, system, and we will do, you can go ahead and type viz, and that will show up set layer visible, double click. The layer will be open quote, and we will be doing this on the triggers layer, and we will set it to invisible. Go ahead and click save. Now if we go to the game, everything should work out fine. We don't see all of our triggers, but our camera still moves. So that is our camera. Let's go ahead and just as a quick little bonus, let's add a screen shake. So we will go ahead and add another function. We will call this screen shake description shake screen. 
Category, Camera. No return type, click OK. Okay, so we'll add a parameter. Uh, let's do mag for magnitude and add one more parameter, which will be dir for duration. Click OK, make both of those numbers. So now we're going to add an action. We will go to camera, scroll on down to the scroll to section, and we have shake. And here we can actually do the magnitude and the duration. And what we're going to do is just go mag for this and dir for this. So now we can set those numbers when we call the screen shake function, allowing us to do a larger shake for one thing and a lesser shake for another, just depending on how you want to do it. We will have a reducing magnitude. That's what we want. Click OK. And now pretty much we can set up a screen shake whenever we want. So let's go ahead and go back up to move rocks and just set one of these in. All right, so if we come up here, let's go ahead and make one on whoosh created because when whoosh created, that means that a rock was hit. So let's go B for a new blank sub event, double click, trigger once, add action, function. Up here in camera, we have screen shake. Let's do a magnitude of, hmm, let's start with 10, that may be too much, and a duration of 0 0.2 seconds. Let's see if that's too much. Click save, let's hit play. Now, if we come over and hit a rock, boom. Okay, that's a bit much. I think 10's a little too much there. So let's drop this down to, let's try six. And this is just a trial and error game. See what looks good for you, what you like, and you can work with that. So let's hit it again. That's not bad, boom. Excellent. Okay, so now that we have the shake when we hit the move rock, we need to actually make the screen shake when the move rock no longer is moving, when it actually collides with something. So we're going to come down here to for each move rock. Let's go ahead and drop this down. Is moving, drop this down. And then under here in each of the directions, we have where if it can move, it'll keep moving. If it can't, it'll stop. So here's where we want to actually put in our shake function. So we will add an action, function, screen shake. Let's go with 4 and 0 0.2. And we want to drag this up before the weight. So on each of them, go ahead and grab that, duplicate it down, grab that, drag it down, and for down, drag it down into this else for each of them. Now, if we go ahead and hit save, we should be able to smack some rocks around and the screen should shake as they hit things. So if we break this, boom. Screen shake seems to be a bit much for me. I will probably knock these numbers down, but if you want crazy screen shake, uh, feel free. <laughs> it's There is no judgment here. There we go. I really think that looks good. Um, I'm going to knock those numbers down, though, because that's a bit high for me. All right, I knocked them down just a little bit. That's a little bit better. I'll, I'll, I can stick with that. Perfect. All right, and that'll do it for this time. We have our camera in, we have our screen shake in. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.